Hey there, viewing public! Are you eagerly anticipating the exciting TV shows on over the Christmas period? Well, to ease the excitement, major broadcasters have decided to just fill the schedules with literally the exact same crap they fill them with every year. Seriously, you could just go and watch my Blunt TV guide from last year. They're doing almost all of them again. So I've had to really dig around for some new shit to talk about, but fortunately this barrel that the broadcasters scrape at the bottom of at this time of year appears to be placed over a bottomless pit. So that's good for me, there's a load of absolute shite down there. Let me crush your Christmas spirit into a bloody amorphous pulp with a fucking sledgehammer. This is The Blunt Guide to British Christmas TV for 2015. Really, how much worse can things get? On Christmas Eve, BBC One have got Midnight Mass, live from St George's Cathedral in Southwark. Experience all the thrills of sitting in some big church in South London, listening to a bunch of elderly men in silly hats warble about that bloke that this holiday is supposed to be about. Or if you just can't wait for this intense experience, here's a suggestion. Lie down on the floor and stare at the ceiling for about 12 hours straight, and you will experience the exact same level of adrenaline that this program will give you. Immediate rivals, ITV, have randomly got a show called The ABBA Christmas Party, in which an array of stars, including Susan Boyle, Alexandra Berkey, Sean, Sean Ward, and Catherine Tildes uh, another person, performed the greatest hits of legendary Swedish pop group ABBA at a ski lodge somewhere in Scandinavia for some reason. Good for them! Meanwhile, Channel 4 have got Jamie's Night Before Christmas, in which celebrity chef Jamie Oliver teaches you how to cook a Christmas dinner. Okay, to save you the time in watching this program, I'll sum it up for you now, right? You know turkey, right? Right, when you want to roast a turkey, what you do is, you prepare it, right? You put tinfoil on it or something. Then you put it on a tray, and what you do is you put it in an oven, and then what you do, right, is you turn the oven on. Oh, and another important thing, put it in for the amount of time that it says to on the packaging and at the temperature it says to. And you basically do the same with everything else that you have in a Christmas dinner, and it'll basically taste all right. Seriously, how do you make an hour out of this? It's Christmas dinner. If you don't know how to make one, Google does still exist, you know. Meanwhile, Channel 5... Y you know, Channel 5? Ch channel number 5? As ever, they've got a show that they made by cutting and pasting some clips into a timeline on Windows Movie Maker. This one's called Christmas Makes You Laugh Out Loud, which according to the synopsis features caterwauling choir singers, the tantrum to end all tantrums, and an extremely long tacky lights tour. So if you want to spend an hour of your life watching people sing badly, children screaming, and a tediously prolonged look at some ugly Christmas lights, people are getting paid actual money to broadcast this. On Christmas Day, BBC One have, as ever, got yet another probably rubbish Doctor Who Christmas special. Here's a dramatisation of what my reaction to it will almost certainly be. Oh my god! Who could possibly have predicted that? Meanwhile, on BBC Two... Oh, oh my god, licence fee well spent! They're broadcasting Michael Grade having his head shoved into a bucket of raw sewage live on television. For a whole hour! Oh my god! Yes! Wow! I've been waiting so long for them to do that! Finally! Like, that there is my pick of the Christmas TV schedules, that is, and... Oh, uh, uh, wait... S sorry, I misread that, um, uh, wishful thinking. Uh, no, it's actually a show where Michael Grade hosts a concert celebrating the music of Tim Rice. Um, if anyone at all wants to watch that, it's on. Meanwhile, Channel 4 have got a new spin-off of their popular show Gogglebox, where people watch TV shows and bitch about them. The spin-off is called Goggle Sprogs, which sees people's children watching TV shows and bitching about them. If they're seriously doing that one, I assume that next year they'll have... I don't know, Goggle Dogs, 
in which people's dogs watch TV and either bark or grunt general approval or disapproval. I really wouldn't put that one past them if they're genuinely doing Gogglebox, but with people's kids. Ooh, I've got another one. How about Inanimate Object Box? In which inanimate objects watch TV and theoretically bitch about it. I think the kettle thinks this show is a load of absolute bollocks. Fucking seriously, how low can they set the bar? Because the bar is getting dangerously close to being two-dimensional by this point. Anyway, on Boxing Day, BBC One have got a brand new series called Dickensian, which is a soap opera about a street where loads of characters from different Charles Dickens novels live together. You've got your Great Expectations characters, your Christmas Carol characters, all living together on one street. Okay, TV, we need a real talk here. Just because it's loosely based on the works of a celebrated author from previous centuries doesn't make it clever. And it doesn't stop it from being what we on the internet call crossover fanfiction. Finally, the TV industry has sunk to our level. On BBC Two, they've got the Top Gear A to Z, an A to Z of all things Top Gear which serves a dual purpose in that one, it's a clip show of previous editions that fills an hour in the schedule with minimal effort required, and two, it's also educational, as it teaches us that C comes after B, D comes after C, E comes after D, and so on and so forth. I can't remember what comes after Q, so I'm really looking forward to this television program teaching me that via the medium of a clip show about cars. Meanwhile, ITV have got Surprise Surprise, the show in which members of the public are invited on television, give their heart-rending life story about how something bad happened to them or they did something nice for someone, and then the program makers give them a present, like a holiday, or a new kitchen, or some fizzy gummy bears and a pat on the head and a sticker. And all of said prizes are brought to you by a piece of corporate product placement. Now, it's definitely a show all about doing nice things for nice people. No, it's not a show all about product placement. Shut up, Stuart. Stop being cynical. Turn your brain off. And let us hug you to death. We are ITV. We will eat your soul. Merry Christmas.